Come with me to judge a local cosplay competition. I've got to get ready first. I have my whole list of things that I need to do before I can leave and about an hour to do all of it. I live off of lists. I work off of lists. This is just how I organize my life and it seems to be working flawlessly. So first up, Elsa makeup. Let's go. First step before you do anything, put deodorant on because if you're going to be in a group of lots of people, especially if you're in a costume, everybody's going to be able to smell you and you're going to make people feel uncomfortable. Deodorant is your best friend. Don't not use it. Then I'm gonna use this teeny tiny tie to tie my hair back. Some people struggle to fit all their hair into a wig. That is not my plight. Primer and moisturizer. Full face of makeup. All day long, you're gonna want both of these. Concealer on your eyes a little bit. This is honestly the best hack that I ever learned from TikTok because my eyeshadow would never stay on until I started doing this. And now I can wear it for like 12 hours and it doesn't really go anywhere. That's really great. The eyeshadow. This is not a makeup tutorial. We are just getting ready for the con and doing it as quickly as possible. So sorry about that. I'm running out of time. I look scary. I need to be faster and keep going. Maybe one day I'll get a foundation that actually matches my skin tone, but until then I'll just keep using this ghostly white one. Okay, last thing is false eyelashes. In my opinion, the best way to make your cosplay makeup pop is to add a gigantic eyelash onto your lash line. This is a skill that I'm still learning, so hopefully this goes well. I definitely prefer magnetic eyelashes, as most eyelash glues really irritate my eyes, but alas, I soldier on. Slap on a velvet headband and we're good to go. I feel like I'm going to regret not completely gluing down my hairline with hairspray, but I'm running out of time. I gotta get my stuff packed in the car and we gotta get going. I don't do my lips until I get to the place because I need to eat something really quick and I don't want to like put all my lip makeup on and then have something to eat and then it just be destroyed. So I'll do that when I get to the mini con. Next up, I'm just gonna pack all of my things. Most of it's pretty much ready to go, but oh, I gotta make sure I have socks. But I'm leaving in like 10 minutes, so I gotta get going. Emergency makeup kit, check. Packing my camera bag because I'm planning on taking pictures after the con, check. Oh, comfortable shoes, you bet. I was trying to take my costume off the little mannequin and I knocked her down. I'm also not putting her back up right now because I gotta go. Threw everything in the car and we're on our way. <laughs> I have to put my costume on now. <laughs> And put my costume on now and put my wig on and um yeah that's what we're doing in the car as usual doing your makeup in a car on your way to a convention is definitely a rite of passage we're finally here i got dressed in the parking lot it's casual my husband's here he looks great and this is my new friend v fire cosplay do <laughs> you want to plug your podcast check out the cosplay stitch and scene where we go behind the stitches and seams of cosplay creation. I've worked on nailing that line. That's you? <laughs> yes. I listened to your podcast. We dove straight into being the judgiest judges of all time. The convention provided us with these little paper score sheets that we used to take notes on. The score sheets have a number system, but I don't personally use the numbers like you would think I would use the numbers. They're more like a guide to help me remember each cosplayer's strengths. I also like to take a photo of each contestant so I can look back on their cosplay and remember exactly what I saw of their work during their in-person judging experience. I always ask before taking a photo and or recording a video of the cosplayer because, say it with me, cosplay is not consent. Okay, things I like to look for when judging a cosplay competition, and this is not a comprehensive list, so don't come at me and be like, oh, you forgot about these things. Yeah, this is a short video and I'm just getting through a few things, so chill out. Okay, how much of the cosplay did the person actually make? Most people will just straight up tell you what they've made, what they've modified, and what they purchased or commissioned. And if you have any questions on whether a cosplayer actually made what they say they made, asking a few questions about their making of process will help you narrow it down. One time I was judging a contest, and this was years ago, but I was judging a contest and one of the contestants claimed to have made this really amazing looking Catwoman suit by hand, but nothing about it really looked handmade. It looked very manufactured, like a costume you could get from Amazon or Mick Costumes. So we asked a few questions about how she made the suit, and she didn't really have any answers for us. Maybe she was just nervous, but most people are thrilled to share their process and they want to tell interesting stories about their sewing and prop making. But she got really defensive and upset when we asked her even the most basic judging questions. If you are the 2B and 9S cosplayers, um, Tangle 2 Cosplay, massive shout out. We are beyond excited about you. Do you have anything to say about that? 
I want to see so much more from you guys. Yes, <laughs> yes, absolutely. The reason we want to know how much a person made, modified, and or purchased is because in this particular contest, one of the rules was that you needed to have made at least 50% of your costume. And it really helps us narrow things down if we know more about the work a person put into a build. Something I like to see in a cosplay is a wide range of skill. So if you roll up and you styled your wig, you did sewing, you have clean needlework, maybe you have foam and crafting in it, maybe there's thermoplastic or you patterned your own pieces and you did your own makeup, that's gonna earn you a higher placement than if your whole entire costume was just hot glued together. My heart and soul goes out to those hot glue gun warriors, but hot glue can only do so much and it can only get you so far. That being said, I really like to consider in what manner was the cosplay constructed. A simple yet impeccably well-made cosplay will always score higher in my book than a complicated but messy cosplay. Sometimes onlookers will feel like a certain cosplayer should have placed higher or even one because they have a seemingly very complex looking outfit. But then someone with like less wow factor ends up placing higher or gets a prize instead and that can be frustrating, I get it, I do. But the judges are looking at everything. We flip the seams, we inspect the wig styles, we ask a bunch of questions and do the best we can to get to know the process of creation. And in the end it's the judges that make the final call on what wins and what doesn't. That's just the way it works. Something I really love is when people bring in a reference photo of what they are cosplaying. For the most part, I can recognize the source material of what character a person is dressed as, but it really helps to have a photo reference right in front of you. Some people like to bring in progress pictures of them actually building their cosplay, and that's really awesome as well. For a small convention like this one, it really wasn't necessary, but anything bigger than this con, and you definitely want to bring some photo proof of your made outfit. Dear Curly girly cosplay I saw you in the parking lot and I already knew who you were because I saw you on Instagram you're amazing you look so good do you have anything to say about that absolutely taking something and transforming it so that it is like it does not look like the original thing anymore you turned it into something that was for you and I am so in love with your costume <laughs> let's do a chef's kiss on three one two three Another thing I really love to see in a cosplay is creativity and innovation. I mean, how many Princess Zelda dresses have I seen that were exactly alike? The answer is, like, so many. And it's easy to see why. Making something screen accurate is really rewarding, but adding a little creativity and innovation into your cosplay is a way to stand out just a little more. You could satin stitch around an applique, or you could do some special embroidery. Something I like to do is outline satin stitching in rhinestones to give it a little extra blingy shine. Add lights, play with proportions. There are so many ways to get creative and maintain screen accuracy. Let's say you really want to cosplay a certain character, but maybe you don't feel comfortable in their exact outfit. That's totally okay. You can modify things to fit your shape and style. I love a good mashup, like D&D meets Pokemon, or the Disney princesses meets historical silhouettes. I have a friend that does a really great Spider-Gwen cosplay, and she does it with hip-hop street shoes instead of ballet flats because she's a trained hip-hop dancer, and she wanted to incorporate a little of herself into the cosplay. Take me for example. The cosplay that I'm wearing in this video is not an exact replica of the one that Elsa wears in the movie. But because I wanted a long sweeping train and extra bling, I made these modifications and you can still totally recognize the character. The judging portion is totally complete and we've deliberated about the winners, so let's go announce the result. All the contestants gathered around the sound system outside of Game Haven and the suspense was really exciting. It felt like so long since I did any cosplay with any other people and not just on the internet. I have good news and I have bad news. The good news is I made a lot of new friends and the bad news is that my camera died right as we were in announcing the winners. But luckily we have photo evidence of the winners. For the judges choice in the beginners category we have Chell and judges choice overall is Glimmer. Placing third in the beginners category is Abby from Monster High, Jinx and Caitlin from Arcane in second place for beginners, and in first place for the beginners category is Makake. This was a true delight to see in person. The bold color palette was absolutely amazing. In the advanced category we have Perona in third place, this awesome Aerith cosplay in second place, and the 2B and 9S cosplayers in first. They want a cool giant hamburger plushie. I hope they treasure that. Final thoughts. I had a really great time. I loved getting to participate in the cosplay contest from the judging side of things. If you are going to compete in a cosplay contest, or maybe you're just thinking about doing it, before you go to the in-person judging, kind of have a plan in your head for the things you want to showcase and what you want to say to the judges. Take a deep breath. You will be okay. Keep a positive attitude and try to have fun. Sometimes what happens is people get into that judging experience and you're in the room with the judges, all you can think to do is show off the parts of your cosplay that are unfinished or imperfect or the things that kind of fell apart. 
And I see this a lot. People get into judging, they get nervous, and then all of a sudden they just talk about the bad stuff. And I say, do the complete opposite. Show off what you're proud of. Talk to the judges about the parts of your cosplays that you really enjoyed working on. Show them the parts that you want them to see. And if you don't win anything, so what? The reality is that most people that enter cosplay competitions don't win anything. That's just the way that it is. If the judges are hanging out after the convention or maybe they have a social media like Instagram or YouTube and you want to reach out to them to get some feedback on your cosplay, just go and ask and try to apply their criticism on this cosplay to your next one or even improving the one that you just got judged in. I gotta be honest, their comments might sting a little bit, but the vast majority of cosplay judges are just regular cosplayers like you and me. And most of them are going to be open and honest with you. And if you're smart, you'll use those critiques on your next cosplay. Thank you all so much for coming with me and thank you for watching this video. This is your formal invitation to like and subscribe. More videos are on their way soon. And in this house, we craft in pajamas.